Good morning everyone, my name is Aileen and welcome to another day of GSC at Home. Now I'm sure that we all have our favourite cartoons and animations that we love to watch, but have you ever thought about how they are made? Well, technology has changed the way that animations are made these days, but the very earliest examples of animation actually use an optical illusion to make them work. And that is still the basis of the animations that we see today. Now, I want to show you something this morning and you can actually make one for yourself. All you will need is some paper or card, some colored pens or pencils, some string, a pair of scissors and a glue stick. So today we are going to make something called a thaumatrope. And what you need is everything that you can see right here. The very first job for you is to draw two circles on your paper. Now it's probably a good idea to use something circular and draw around it because that's going to give you two circles the same size. And what you need to do then is to cut them out. So you will be left with your two circles just like this. This is where you have to decide what it is that you want to draw. So it can be anything that you like. You can get creative here and you're going to draw a picture on each side of your paper. Now, I have decided today to draw a fish and a bowl. Okay, now what I did here was I drew the bowl first and then I made some light pencil marks on this piece just so that I could make sure that my fish would be the right size to fit inside the bowl. But as I said, you can choose what you would like to draw. Now that we have finished both of our pictures, it is time to glue them together. Now, when it comes to gluing our pictures together today, what we have to do is make sure that we get them in the right way. So I'm gonna take my fish first and I want to make sure that my fish is facing up the way. And then I want my bowl to be upside down. Okay, so what we want to do is to flip them over so that you're gluing the opposite side, the plain side with no pictures on them. I'll get my glue and you're just going to glue inside. There we go. I'm going to make sure I do a little bit on both pieces just to make sure those edges stick. So my bowl is upside down and I'm going to stick my fish facing me on top and you'll want to try to get your edges to line up together as much as possible. Okay, so that means when I flip my picture, I have my bowl on one side and my fish on the other. And now it's time to make some holes in either side and it's a good idea to get a parent or grown up to help you with this part. So as you can see, I have now made a hole in either side of my picture. You want to try and get them even one on either side. Um, so you can use the pair of scissors or you can use a hole punch to do this. But as I said, make sure you get a little bit of help for that. Now I have cut two lengths of string, about 10 centimetres each. And then what I've done is just to fold them over in the middle so that it gives you a loop just like this one. Now I'm going to thread the loop through one of the holes in my pictures, give it a little pull just so that you've got that loop showing there and then I'm going to thread the ends of the piece of string through the loop and pull. And I'm going to be a little bit gentle because I don't want to rip my picture. So you're going to do the same with both pieces of string. Now, when you have finished that step, your thaumatrope is complete and you are ready to try it out. So I have the fish on one side, the bowl on the other. What do you think might happen? Let's try it. What did you see? Did you see the fish inside the bowl? This is an optical illusion called persistence of vision. Persistence of vision is caused when you look at an image, the back of your eye, the retina, sends a signal to the brain. 
and that signal is to let you know what you're looking at. For example, when you looked at the fish, that signal was sent to your brain to let you know you were looking at a fish. But when I changed it, when I changed the card to something else, that signal continued for a really short amount of time, only one sixteenth of a second. But your brain thought that you could still see the fish even after it had disappeared. Now, although we know that these are two separate images, when we spin them quickly, our brain tells us that they have blended together into one image. And this is persistence of vision. Let's look at this amazing effect a little further. We could see how that worked with just two images, but animators use this same effect to make us believe that we are seeing movement or motion, when in actual fact what we're seeing is a series of still images that are changing very, very quickly. And this is how animations are made. Now the zoetrope, or the Wheel of Life, was invented in the 19th century, and it creates the illusion of movement. Um, now you'll be able to see this in practice just now. So it's got a large circular drum with slats all the way around the outside and around the inside of the drum is a series of still images with a small change in each one. And when you spin the drum and you look through the slats, persistence of vision means that those signals are being sent to our brain each time we see a new image. But it lingers for that little bit of time creating that illusion of movement and bringing those pictures to life. But as the zoetrope begins to slow down and stop, we can once again see that all that was there was a series of still images. The praxiniscope was the improved version of the zoetrope, which you'll be able to see for yourself just now. And what it did was to replace the slats around the outside of the drum with an inner circle of mirrors. And these mirrors were positioned so that the reflection showed a still image when the drum is spun. Now, for the person looking into those mirrors, they would see a very rapidly moving series of still images, but persistence of vision would create that illusion of movement. Now, the zoetrope and the praxiniscope both use the effect of persistence of vision, but the use of mirrors made the movement much smoother and much clearer, and that's why it was considered to be an improvement. Now, I really hope you have enjoyed learning about this amazing effect of persistence of vision today. But if you wanted to create your own short animation at home, you could make a flipbook. To make your flipbook, you can either use a small notebook or jotter and you can draw your pictures down in the corner and that will save a little bit of time. But if you don't have one of those, you can make your very own from scratch. So you will need a piece of paper and you're going to fold that in half. And just give it a little press down. And then you're going to fold in half once again. And again, give that a press down at the bottom. So once you've done that, you can fold it back out and you're going to have a piece of paper with these lines down the middle. And these are just a guide for you to cut. So you need to get your scissors eh, and maybe get a grown up to help you with this part as well. And you're gonna cut down each of those lines and that will give you four strips of paper, just like this. Now with these four strips, you need to fold them in half once again. Give that a little press down. And then you're going to cut down that line as well with your scissors. And that will give you eight pages for your flip book. Now you want to make sure that the edge that you have that you're going to draw against is the edge of the paper, not the edge that you cut because that will be a straighter edge. And then you're going to tap them all together, make sure they all line up. And at this point you can attach them either by stapling them or by using um, something called a bulldog clip, which looks just like this. Now, I would recommend that you do the same thing two or three times with two or three pieces of paper, and that will give you plenty bits to draw on in your flip book. And mine is right here and ready to draw. And you can even have a little flick through and just make sure that it is working.
and then it'll be time to draw. So now we are ready to get drawing. Now you can draw anything that you like. I would suggest that if this is your, your first flip book you've made, that you keep your idea quite simple. That is definitely what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to turn to the back page of my flip book and start there. And you want to make sure that whatever you're making is on this edge so that you can see it really nice and clearly. So I think I am going to draw a rocket launching. So you'll see that I'm going to start with a little pencil drawing of a rocket because I want to be able to rub out any mistakes. But I am then going to go over it in a black marker so if you've got a dark coloured felt tip pen at home, that would be a super duper thing to do. So there we have all the little pieces of my rocket. I think that will do it. So as I said, I'm now going to go over this in black marker. And the reason for that is because when I lay the next piece of paper on top, hopefully I'll be able to see just a little bit of the outline shining through the paper. And that means I don't have to guess where to draw the next one. I've got a bit of a guide to help me. So there's my little rocket. Let's see if that works. So yeah, if I lift that just a little bit, you can see that that is just shining through the paper enough for me to see. And I'm going to draw with a slight movement this time. So I'm going to take it up the way I'm going to start just a tiny bit higher up. The thing to remember is to make your movements small in each picture. If you make a big change and a big movement in between each one, it's going to look a little bit clunky when you come to test it out. So keep your changes small and you can draw as many pictures in your flip book as you like, but I would recommend doing somewhere between 12 and 24. I think we'll maybe start to see a little bit of dust, a little rumble at the bottom of our rocket. So I'm just gonna go over this yet again in black pen. And then I'm gonna continue with my drawings until my rocket has moved all the way up and into space. So like I said, you can draw any idea that you like. And the more confident you get, the longer the animations you can make. So I'm going to go away just now and finish my flip book and I'll show you my results. And I hope that you start making yours too. Okay, so here is my finished flip book. Let's give it a try. And if we go back the other way, it looks like the rocket is coming back down. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> now, I'm sure that you will be uh, able to do a lot better than me, but I hope that you have enjoyed uh, having a shot at making a flip book. You have all been fantastic animators today. I really hope that you've enjoyed learning more about the amazing effect that is persistence of vision and that you have learned a little bit more about how animations are made. Now, if you do make your own thomatrope or your own flipbook, please do tag us in them as we would love to see them. If you have any questions or comments, we will do our best to answer them. And um, thank you so much for joining us again today. Stay safe. Bye for now.